First of all, I have to say that uh, uh, the success of immunotherapy at the moment has been um, limited uh, due to the um, fact that most of these patients have a, a low, what we call, cancer immune set point, meaning that the threshold um, beyond which we can reinstate tumor immunosurveillance in a given patient might be variable uh, depending on uh, the genetics of the host, the genetics of the cancer, the comorbidity, uh, the co-medications, uh, the environmental factors, and all of these cues will influence uh, what we call the cancer immune set point, which is a very threshold beyond which an immune uh, response can ensure. And so uh, the immune system of a patient uh, can be governed uh, by uh, uh, the microbiome, that's what the data seems to indicate, and this microbiome will uh, influence so not only the threshold but also the duration, the intensity, uh, and, uh, 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 and the strength of the immune system of a given patient. So now uh, that we know that, uh, what were the evidence that have been uh, brought up so far and published uh, by the colleagues and uh, our team uh, that support uh, this contention? So first of all, uh, we were able to show that antibiotics, broad spectrum antibiotics, whether beta-lactamines or uh, uh, fluoroquinolones or tetracyclines uh, um, can actually uh, decrease the efficacy of immune checkpoint blockade and those data now have been uh, analyzed on more than 400 patients, lung, kidney, uh, bladder cancer patients, even melanoma cancer patients. So this is more or less uh, demonstrated in a, a larger meta-analysis that uh, the um, antibiotics really impair uh, the efficacy of uh, the immune checkpoint blockade when they are administered about one month prior to the start of the antibody, the therapeutic antibody. So that's the first line of evidence. The second line of evidence um, stems from the fact that uh, uh, if you use an avatar mouse model, which is a transfer of fecal material into a germ-free animal, or into an animal that has been uh, decontaminated uh, using broad spectrum antibiotics, then you expect uh, the fecal microbial transplant coming from a, a cancer patient to colonize at least partially uh, uh, the host. Uh, and in that case, you can inoculate a cancer and administer treatment and uh, analyze properly uh, the impact of the uh, gut composition uh, uh, to the uh, microbiome composition on the efficacy of the treatment uh, in these mouse models. And so we were able to show in this avatar mouse model that uh, we could almost predict whether a patient at diagnosis uh, would be able to respond to PD-1 blockade based on the transfer, the mere transfer of his fecal uh, uh, see his tools uh, materials at the beginning uh, into this avatar. So of course it's not black and white. We, uh, we uh, noticed that in 18% cases uh, it was unpredictable. However, this means that the stool uh, is the, uh, at least one of the components dictating the efficacy of immune checkpoint blockade in tumor bearing animals. Then the third line of evidence uh, is based on the metagenomics uh, based uh, gut oncomicrobiome fingerprints, uh, which are, you know, the, um, uh, the detailed um, sequencing of the whole microbiome of a given patient. So if we compare the responders from the non-responders using uh, resist response criteria, best clinical outcome or time to progression at three or six months, we can segregate and contrast the responding patients versus the non-responding patients to this therapy uh, based on the alpha and or beta diversity, or if not based on uh, the predominance of, uh, let's say, some immunogenic commensals as opposed to uh, regulatory commensals. So we are, uh, of course, these are, uh, are um, uh, it's a pioneering burgeoning field, and uh, we need uh, to, uh, you know, if this is to become a, a true biomarker, we need validation cohorts of um, 
uh, at different locations uh, with different type of treatments, what we are trying to do at the moment. But I will come back to this notion later. But basically, what we would like to call GOMS, so gut oncomicrobiome uh, signatures, uh, appear to, to at least segregate at diagnosis uh, the patients prone to respond or doomed to fail the therapy. And then the fourth line of evidence um, is more, uh, you know, uh, what we knew about how therapeutics uh, can uh, alter the, uh, uh, the intestinal integrity, the epithelial barrier. Uh, we know more and more about the biology of the intestine, and it sounds like apoptosis, autophagy, necroptosis, inflammasome, ignition, all these uh, very fundamental pathways seems to play a major role uh, to regulate stem cellness, to regulate absorption, and, uh, and of course to uh, impact on the uh, systemic uh, metabolism of the host and uh, in, uh, as a consequence on the systemic immune system. So these were the four lines of evidence that we knew um, so far and that we accumulated uh, uh, through this publication over the last seven years. So what comes next and where are we standing at the moment? So first of all, I would like to say that our governments, the French Ministry of uh, Health Affairs and of Research have supported us uh, um, together with INRA at building up a consortium uh, that is based on a cultural mix uh, potential that we had from EHU Mediterranean Infection with Didier Raoult, uh, the head of the EHU, South France. So we have now the cultural mix potential, meaning that you can cultivate the feces of patients uh, onto uh, different conditions, uh, culture mediums, and you can uh, from that uh, uh, align uh, the whole uh, let's say, repertoire of uh, commensals that this particular patient is hosting. Uh, we can also do, uh, the, of course, the 16S and or the metagenomics sequencing of the whole microbiome of the same patient. And we will have complementary uh, information vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis of the cultural mix. And we can uh, then see whether the patient has a signature that seems to indicate that he has, uh, you know, regulatory and or immunogenic uh, commensals that could play a role uh, during uh, this immune stimulation. So uh, the aim of uh, this is to, of course, uh, identify and map uh, what are the important uh, commensals in terms of, uh, first of all, uh, curing or re-establishing, restoring a normal integrity of the gut, and secondly, in mediating metabolomic or uh, metabolite-based uh, immunostimulation and, and, and cure the cancer at the end. So um, beside these efforts, we are of course trying to do causative uh, relationship uh, with the responses, so meaning that uh, we need to identify new uh, commensals in the dark matter. We have not uh, been able to identify all the commensals, but now Thanks to the new technologies of cultural mix, we can uh, identify new commensals, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say report it, uh, uh, and uh, do a, 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 a deposit in the specific repositories where the whole community can access to these new commensals and can do a cause-effect relationship in different diseases in different mouse models to be able to bring up the proof of principle uh, that these commensals uh, are really uh, mediating some kind of uh, uh, bio-effect, whether you're interested in stimulating uh, uh, the immune system or, in, in contrast, eradicating the uh, regulatory T cells or boosting the regulatory T cells. We are also uh, very much uh, uh, involved in the metabolomic analysis. So this necessitates mass spectrometry uh, and mass spectrometers of uh, high, um, high uh, quality equipment uh, and that enables to, uh, uh, in different, uh, um, uh, in different um, uh, liquids, uh, so ileum, uh, colons, but also the plasma, the liver, the heart, and the uh, omentum uh, fat tissues, we can identify the, uh, the metabolites that can be uh, inferred from the administration of a given commensal so that uh, we have also a better view 
of uh, uh, what we are uh, modulating when we are performing an oral gavage uh, with distinct uh, uh, microbes. So it's important also to say that uh, these, these microbes uh, uh, will be at some point combined together uh, to give a, a single medication. And uh, at the moment, several biotech companies are trying to uh, uh, figure out what would be the ideal consortium, the minimalist ecosystem that would be able to kill two birds with one stone, re-establish normal abiosis in these cancer patients, and uh, go further trying to boost the immune system and to synergize uh, with the therapies. So of course, we are not sure one size will fit all. First of all, uh, some cancer patients might have specific dysbiosis depending on the cancer type. Uh, secondly, uh, some therapeutics might also switch on and off uh, or modulate the microbiome composition. And it will be of interest in the near future to distinguish uh, what is the participation of the disease uh, in the dysbiosis and what is the, uh, the involvement of the therapy in modulating this dysbiosis. And of course, uh, we would like to propose at the end uh, maybe a personalized therapy with uh, the ideal microbiota of the patient, but more uh, probably we will be able to come up with a mixture of a commensal that will be able to repair the, the, the intestinal barrier of disease patients and also maybe another uh, consortium which will be able to reinstate uh, uh, you know, humoral and cellular immunity against cancer. And this is uh, presumably <clears throat> also something of importance. Uh, now, uh, I would like to uh, finish in uh, prophylaxis. So of course, uh, we are now more and more interested in looking at what diet is doing on the microbiome composition. We recently heard from uh, the uh, <coughs> colleague in Israel, the Weizmann Institute, and my colleague Jenny Vargo at MD Anderson, that the diet may impact on um, the, the microbiome and re, uh, reversely, conversely, the microbiome will impact on the diet. Uh, metabolism, so it's an intertwin relationship that is not easy to dissect at the first place. But presumably, we will go into a direction where the best commensal, the best mixed of uh, the minimalist ecosystem will have to be combined with an appropriate diet in order to enable these uh, commensals uh, to establish colonize uh, in a long um, term uh, um, process and not just a short term process. And so at the moment, uh, the investigators are trying to uh, uh, at least understand uh, in cancer patient what kind of diet, whether it's fasting, intermediate fasting, or you know, ketogenic diet or fiber enriched diet. So at the moment, there is an agnostic view on what to do. Uh, more importantly, we will have to monitor uh, plasma and or you know, tissue-related uh, biomarkers to be able to have a follow uh, a, a, a pharmacokinetic uh, assessment of what the diet is actually introducing in the host so that we will have a hallmark biomarker of uh, bioactivity of the diet, if I can say so. And we should be in a position where we will know that the diet has induced, uh, uh, you know, complete bioactivity and biology, and we will know how the gut microbiome of the host will have been uh, modified. So uh, this is what currently the efforts are uh, redirected uh, to, to, and uh, we uh, have hope that uh, some foundation that are currently helping the, uh, the academic institution are um, really uh, in, uh, um, in love with the idea of trying to uh, get the patient participate in his own cure by just doing its own uh, uh, biotherapy, by eating uh, the right uh, food composition so that he will redirect his own microbiome in a, uh, you know, in a, uh, towards an optimal uh, um, biosystem, ecosystem. That's one uh, thing that uh, we are thinking about. And then the second thing, of course, is try to understand whether uh, the microbiome can cause cancer, so can cause inflammation and from chronic inflammation can increase the propensity of a given subject to, uh, uh, to uh, increase his, his 
likely to develop a cancer. And so we have, uh, at the moment, uh, we are launching the Oncobiome Age 2020 uh, network in Europe. So there are, uh, this is a, a wide geography uh, distribution of uh, geographical distribution of all the investigators are trying to um, have feces, collection of feces prior to developing any type of cancer. And we will, uh, we will be in a position within the next uh, three years, I think, to come up with uh, the validation or the invalidation of the idea uh, that a dysbiosis can actually cause cancer or at least uh, some cancer types. So with that, I think that uh, there is a lot of uh, impetus and enthusiasm from the biotech company and the big pharma now to come along uh, with academics and uh, also uh, big hospitals to be able to uh, really launch uh, uh, clinical trials that will either uh, um, start from PD-1 resistant, anti-PD-1 uh, therapy resistant patients that will receive either fecal microbial transplantation of responding and cured patients or will uh, get an, uh, a mix of uh, commensals or spores that will uh, re-establish a proper uh, ecosystem. So these are currently um, ongoing uh, at the University of Pittsburgh at uh, the MD Anderson in Texas. Uh, in France, we have also uh, Mad Pharma with the Enema-based uh, 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 re-administration of abiotic uh, fecal materials. Uh, we also have Vedanta, who is coming up with an 11 mix of uh, um, um, commensals uh, that seems to uh, uh, be very broadly effective against uh, wide ranges of uh, uh, mouse tumors. And uh, uh, there are also other investigators that try to um, now uh, look at the phages that are inserted into the commensals. These phages uh, bear their viruses of the prokaryotes, so they might uh, mediate an immunogenic or an antigenic um, response as effective as the one that we know for human viruses towards uh, eukaryotes. So uh, some uh, interesting uh, preclinical studies indicate that it could be the case and that phages can be also another way. Phagotherapy could be another way to approach the diversity and to harness the diversity of the microbiome. And more to come, presumably, also on the side of our key, which are uh, for far ahead but uh, that also uh, may open uh, the question of the inter-kingdom relationship and, uh, uh, and this uh, interactive networking in our gut.